Self-Publishing Podcast, episode number 154. This episode of the Self-Publishing Podcast is brought to you by 99designs, the online marketplace that helps you get outstanding book cover designs at an affordable price. Start your custom design today at 99designs.com slash SPP and enjoy a free power pack upgrade valued at 99 bucks. Welcome to the Self-Publishing Podcast, where if you want something done right, you've got to do it yourself. And now, here are your hosts, the three guys who hunt Ewoks on the forest moon of Endor, Johnny, Sean, and Dave. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Self-Publishing Podcast, the podcast that follows three full-time authors as we attempt to change the face of indie publishing. Join us in our trailblazing guests as we shove aside brown boundaries, freely experiment, and occasionally screw up. I'm Johnny B. True, and my co-hosts are Sean Platt and David Wright. Putting a little bit of forethought into the um, intro today, I, I decided to play the Ewoks one because it's kind of a sci-fi themed show today. And so I thought, well, we'll just we'll just make that little tip of the hat. The, the we're, hunting. You're actually being relevant. We're relevant. <laughs> Barely. We're you old. We are. We started literally to the minute on time. Um, we are. And Dave we're, was up for two minutes before that. <laughs> That's a whole minutes two minutes this time. Yes. And I know it was two minutes because when Dave announced he was going to bed at 8 a.m., um, <laughs> I got in just a little bit behind on a, a Slack conversation where I said, "Oh, hold on, before you go to bed, and we we start at 4:30, maybe like 10 minutes early, and that was it. It was." It was so too since late. Yeah, it was too late. News you lose. Um, but we're we're recording at an odd time today for two reasons that that work together. Actually, uh, we needed to record an odd episode anyway. If you're um, a live watcher, you're probably like, "What the hell is going on?" It's episode 154 before episode 153. I don't know what to do with myself. Um, that's because this is the episode that will air when uh, we would normally record it. Well, we're going to be at Austin. Uh, in Austin at the summit, um, but it worked out well because uh, we're going to today. We're going to be interviewing um, Andy Weir, the author of *The Martian*, and um, the audiobook narrator for that book, who was also uh, one of the narrators for *The Beam*, R.C. Bray. And this time worked and out. Much- yesterday's gone. Oh, was he in? Who was he in *Yesterday's Gone*? I'm not sure who he was in *Yesterday's Gone*. Thank <laughs> See, that's what you get for opening your mouth. Right there. <laughs> you wouldn't. You don't automatically know, and and because I was just listening, I'm listening to the audiobook for Beam season two right now, and I got um. Do you, do you remember that moment in um in in Spaceballs where the the ship is going past the screen and you just keep waiting? It's at the beginning, <laughs> just waiting for the ship to end and waiting for the ship to end. That was me listening to the credits. It's you know Red Bot, <laughs> Ray Chase, and RC Bray, and you know on and on and on and on. There are 94 and, voice actors in the Beam, and I realized that I don't know. They don't tell you who is who, and um, like I was, there's a, a new voice for a new character, and I was like, oh, I wonder who that is because I really like this ca- character. I really liked Kate. She was a new character in season two, and Kate's I Kate's voice is uh, great. Yeah, and she does a, a that the the machine voice. The you know, I'm sorry, that is not recognized. That's really really good. Um, but I, I don't know who it is. So there you go. I'm in the same boat. Can I also say just high five to podium on the way they handled the transcripts? Uh, you know which part I'm talking about? The transcripts from that lost conversation. I haven't gotten to them yet. I, I'm really, really curious about it. Dude, it's fantastic. They okay, just to catch everybody up here. There's a there's a section of uh, the Beam season two where there's they find these old transcripts from a conversation, and they're corrupted, and. Um, a lot of it was just like numerals and cut off conversation pieces and Podium actually sent us an email that was like, how the hell are we supposed to handle this? And we told them, use your judgment. You'll do fine. And and they did. It, like, it, it crushes it. It's just, it's a great, great scene. And um, actually, uh, do you know who reads that scene? Yeah, Ray does. Yeah, Ray, Ray reads that scene. Um and and it's it's really really great. I I really enjoyed listening to it, um, just as not as the the writing itself, but as the performance of of how Podium was able to articulate that. Because it's it's an example of you know if you're watching a movie, there are certain tricks that you can do that you don't have that same bag of tricks with um, you know just your book. And audio is the same way. And this really fully employed you know audio tricks and it was cool I really really liked that we wanted to do um, a visual 
uh, cue, the sort of thing that in movie making you'd notice and you'd say, oh, like I saw that in um, Axis of Aaron, and it's like, but I guess we can't do that because you got to draw attention to it, you know. Um, one of the things that I noticed audio versus print when I was listening to season one is that um, in the Beam, uh, the Beam is the network and it's B E A M capital B, and then there's a currency that they're trying to ratify that's like oh yeah, like it, and it's called it's called Beam, but it's lowercase B E E M, and so the scenes where they're saying well what if Beam goes on the Beam and the Beam and the Beam and it's just like oh yeah like. Okay, is it too late to go back and change that? Can we make <laughs> no. yeah. so, that. so anyway, looking forward to having um, having Andy and, and Bob. He goes by Bob Ray on um, at uh, five if you're live, and um, they're just going to hop in. So hopefully we'll get through our various awkwardnesses and our spontaneous ad read. Spontaneous ad read before that, because it's always really fun when somebody <laughs> hops in, in the middle of an ad read and we can't stop it. So. <laughs> It's the best slash worst. Um, I do have an announcement I'd like to make, and that is that um, <clears throat> who who was it drew our attention to this? Was it um, was it was it Patrick Stemp or was it Amy who noticed that we were coming up on our anniversary? I, um, I want to say it was Amy, but it may have been by way. Well, of I th I think Amy pointed out that they mentioned it in Patrick's uh, self publishing podcast community on Google Plus. So it's everybody love the self publishing podcast community on Google Plus. I, I, I'm never in there, but I I do love them. You know, <laughs> okay. like, don't 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 take my lack of participation as a. You're lack never of, anywhere though. You're, you're writing ten thousand right. words a day. <laughs> yeah, I I wrote ten thousand words today. I um, hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, the um, we are coming up in the three-year anniversary of the podcast, and it's um, so we decided we said, what can we do that'll be a fun live show? Uh, what, well, that'll be a fun show. Like, what can we do? And we decided to do. It's always live, but we're going to do it at a time when more people can join us live. If you want to, and when so Dave will have been awake for longer than we'll four minutes again. Wait, what time is that? I don't even know. Oh, okay. we get it midnight. <laughs> Tune in, Dave, because I'm making an announcement that you and the listeners can share you know, experiencing together. Um, it would normally be on Friday, May 1st. So that's the normal recording slot. But what we're going to do is Wednesday, April 29th, and we're going to do it at 8 p.m. Eastern time. 8 p.m.? Holy crap. That's we put my son to bed. It, oh, well, it has to, worst it has time to, ever. <laughs> it has to be at a time when Johnny can drink White Russians. Well, but isn't that our standard when, we, all do, night. when yeah. we do stuff at night? It's always 8 p.m., right? Yeah, like, right. I, I love how shocked he is by this. <laughs> no, no, no. I do 9 p.m. I don't do 8 p.m. No, oh, okay. We, we've never, ever had a no. night thing at night. I'll, be on, it, I'll be on it at 8.30. As part of the show, why don't we have you putting your son to bed? Oh, that would be wonderful. <laughs> I'll read go the fuck to sleep. <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> Um, right. I have a, a, a friend who his dad is a vet. He objects to the idea of putting the kids down, you know, <laughs> put my son down, and then and then he's like, "Well, no, I'm going to go put him to sleep." Oh, that doesn't work either. There's no way that you can talk about that. So. I actually said I was slacking with Dave the other night, and it was right at bedtime, and I said, "Okay, I'll be back. I'm going to go put Ethan and Haley down." And then, like, I was already halfway up out of my seat. I sat back down and said, "Don't put it. Don't get excited. <laughs> I'm tucking them in." <laughs> Oh man, there is some. Um, uh, Sean was Sean went a little Dave uh, recently in our. Um, we had, a, had a, a story meeting yesterday. I'm writing colonization now, which is the so contact, which is the <laughs> invasion book launches tomorrow, and um, colonization I'm working on now. And we had a story meeting about it yesterday, and um, I, I don't want to say any too much detail or anything, but there were some kind of Dave sorts of things that he was just like, well, we could do this, and we could do this, and I was like, kill them all. <laughs> I, was making, I was making Johnny uncomfortable with the same sentences that would make Dave hard. So <laughs> Hard? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's good stuff. Um, so do we, we want to get through some of these questions on the Google? Yeah, why don't, we, why don't we do some questions and skip something, or something cool can be that we have Andy and Bob on today. Like those can, that can be our something cool. So do you want to go ahead and go that to the... That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, let's see. I have the page up. <clears throat> um, what are your thoughts on using an aggregator like draft to digital or Smashwords? Um, I think that's a good question. Um, either of you guys want to go first? Um, I can go. 
So I think that this was specifically about, if this is the question I'm thinking of, it was specifically about draft to digital That's what he was asking about. Um, we've had a mixed bag is maybe the appropriate way to say it with um, Smashwords. Um, we haven't had any luck there at all. But draft to digital on the other hand... I um, think Dave's actually said a bag of dicks <laughs> is the actual quote there. Yeah, I've we've we've had a little a, a little difficulty with Smashwords. It tends to be a little uh, clunky in our experience with the, the interface and stuff. But um, Draft to Digital, on the other hand, is is very very slick. And we're gonna have um, Dan Wood. I don't know what his title is, but he's from Draft to Digital. Digital, and we actually have um, people that we talk to at Apple, and we mainly use Draft to Digital to go to Apple. And one of the main reasons that we're specifically using that is because um, a few reasons. Number one, um, Apple's direct publishing, once you get used to it, is uh, not difficult once you get used to it. But it's, it's, I love you guys at Apple, but it's, in my opinion, very difficult until you get used to it. And um, I've noticed that it tends to be a little... Yeah, and I don't think that's Johnny's opinion. I think that seems to be universally agreed upon. It, it's proprietary. You know, you don't use a web interface. You need to download an app. You have to have a Mac. Um, that sort of thing. And it... Um, I've noticed that some of the updates don't go through uh, when I would expect them to. Draft to digital works just like any other um, console-based, uh, you know, publishing, and, and it goes right away. And Draft to digital has a very good um, relationship with Apple and and with Scribd too. Is it Scribd or Scribd? I think it's Scribd. I think it's Scribd. And th so, so they have their own promotions. So with um, Draft to digital, you you sort of get a, a chance. To be in some other promotions, that, as opposed to just the the um, the platform itself. Now that said, they do take ten percent. So on a title where you would make seventy percent, you would make sixty. Um, I wouldn't say that you have less control. You technically do, um, but it's not like with Smashwords. With Smashwords, I feel like I've taken my hands off the wheel. But with Draft to Digital, it's like the, it's it's very fast. And so we're we're sort of pursuing that on a book by book basis. And, yeah, I think. For, for pros, you, you've got a really clean interface for sure. It's fast. It's reliable. Um, I think that your your ability to get some other promotions that you wouldn't get otherwise um, are amplified, which is great because you, you can't resent the 10% because they're handling everything for you. Um, Especially if you get publicity you wouldn't normally get if you're that lucky. Right. It's like an it's like having an affiliate partner. Just be grateful. You know that that 10% is probably still netting you more than you would have otherwise. Um, and really the only con, I think, is that, uh, you know, once it's there, it's there, unless you want to lose all your reviews or something. So, you know, it is a, it is a decision to make and the 10%. But, um, you know, if it, I would argue that you could possibly make more than that 10% by the relationship if you're putting out good stuff and the people at Drafted Digital know that you're putting out good stuff and, you know, they can market that for you. Um, I don't think there's a clear oh, right or wrong. You, you, if you produce good stuff over and over, you will eventually develop relationships with these people. And you shouldn't consider, this is my book and I'm done, I'm walking away. Right. If it's, this is my book and I'm done and I'm walking away, you're probably better off just going straight to Apple but because uh, no one's going to be nurturing that relationship. Um, or just going yeah. straight to draft to digital because it's easy. You know. Yeah. Apple in their support documents actually, and, and I almost didn't believe this when somebody told me, but then I found it. They actually kind of encourage you to go through an aggregator, not like go through an aggregator, but it's almost like you get to a point in the. Don't support. bother us. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. You get to the support and you're like, yeah, if you're gonna just go through an aggregator, just do it. Don't don't bother. <laughs> um, and, but they also will go to Kobo and Nook, but we don't use Draft Digital for. We just go direct to Kobo and Nook. Yeah, I, I think that there there clearly isn't a right or a wrong here. Even for us, it's book to book. You know, we're when we when we're ready to publish something, we think what is the best thing for this book, and I think that that you know th that tells you something right there. Smashwords okay. has gotten a little easier. They do accept EPUBs, which they didn't for a long time. So, whatever that's worth. Yeah, they they have a weird validation thing. Um, one of the things I, I usually go to Smashwords when I'm doing the rounds of publishing a new title, just because it's like uh, you know I hit. Hit Amazon, Kobo, Nook, 
Apple and, and Smashwords. Why not, right? Because Smashwords you can get into a few places that you wouldn't normally. Um, through draft digital we're going ahead and doing uh, like Tolino, which is a German conglomerate. Um, but there are ones in Smashwords that's just like, well, sure, why not? Like Flipkart, which is the Indian one. And um, I've had things where I, it's, it's gone through and then I'll have to make a change, something like uh, an updated manuscript. So, you know, you fix some typos. And then it won't go, and my reaction is, okay, well, fuck it. Like, I'm just, I just won't publish. Like, it's just, it's not worth the hassle. It passed before. Just sell one passed. book every quarter. Right, and, and, and what's funny about Smashwords, and I know some people kill it on Smashwords. It's a, it's a good service for the people who, uh, I don't mean to crap on it, but when, when I, they'll send me an email when I make a sale, and that's actually a downside because I get them so infrequently that all of those emails just remind me that I never, ever sell there. It's like, oh, shit, I just sold something on Smashwords. That's hilarious. During uh, a book book ad, we got, like, I, four emails over the course of a week from Smashwords. And like, Whoa, we're lighting it up. Yeah. <laughs> all right, um, here's... Sellers. In Write, Publish, Repeat, you also... Uh, you also about the fact... Um, and there's a word missing there. Ooh, um, also. <laughs> that you should treat your book like a product and not have emotional ties, and also that the first book won't sell that well until you have other books in the funnel. What do you recommend if your first book is something that you have a huge attachment to, worked on for 14 plus years, and can't bear to see it flounder like that? In a case like this, do you hold off and write and publish something else first? Uh, I say treat everything like a product, including your family, relationships, and all that. That way, nobody can ever disappoint you. <laughs> Sad we're not doing better. No uh, emotional um, attachments whatsoever. Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, I, I feel two ways about this. Um, you know, if you just get it out there, I, I think that's fine. I, I don't think that creativity... I think creativity is a bottomless well. So I think that when you think of your... Um, oh, okay, I'm going to bring this back to Dave. Actually, Ooh. yeah, because all things go back because, to Dave. Yeah, Dave feels very precious about yesterday's gone. You know, like that's 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 our that's our title. That's our big title. Like we doesn't want to give early ones away because that's that's that is us. That's what we made our name on. And to me, it's like I want yes at the end of my life, I want yesterday's gone to be a footnote. You know, because we grew so much and we did so much after that. And you know, it feels really big and really monumental now. One of the, the most heartbreaking things I ever heard an artist say was uh, Paul Thomas Anderson, who made uh, Magnolia, which I love. It's one of my favorite movies. Mine too. And he said, yeah, I'm never going to make a movie that good again. Like, that was my peak. But he was right. And, and I don't I don't think he's right. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Shyamalan's the same thing, I think. Well, he was right, though. <laughs> but I think that you can't put that out there, that you've done your best work. Like, get it out there and then and then evolve. Get, get better. Precious but, to you. Because it's your first. That, that's... Yes, but but having said that, you know, I have one of those books that it was the first thing I ever wrote, and I to this day I don't think I'm qualified to rewrite it yet. I'm not good enough, and so you know, it's kind of in an incubation somewhere, and let those ideas marinate, and I'll continue to work on my craft. So I can really see this from either side, but um, I just don't think that you should ever let fear hold you back. But I, I also don't think that you want to um, put that much pressure on a book, like that poor book, you know. Um, a good example, maybe for, for us, so um, look at, for, for Roman Sands, look at Invasion and Contact, which sell really well, and then look at Axis of Aaron, which is my favorite of all of our books. That's, that's the one I like best doesn't sell much at all. Now, I think that long-term legacy will find ways to goose that. We'll be able to do promotions. Maybe we'll win awards. But, like, that book was really, really expensive in terms of time spend, in terms of just uh, thought. Emotions. And emotional. <laughs> right. And so it was, it was very, very difficult. But you can't say sales are the barometer by which I will measure this book. Like, there's something to be said for getting the art out there. Um, the people who read Axis uh, say much more, they say, you know, superlative things about that book. Invasion, they say, wow, this is really fast-paced, like, what a good page-turner. Um, Axis, they say, wow, this, like, changed my, my way of looking at life. So okay. I don't think you can look at that as linear. Th this is funny because I actually had this exact conversation with my sister last night. Uh, she called. Uh, it was very funny. She said, I, I, "I have something to confess to you. I feel like I'm keeping secrets from you." And it was she because... she told you about our affair. Yes, yes, she did. Ah. Actually, she my sister, who has been 
the longest holdout of anyone I've ever met um, to hate Apple and never ever get a Mac. Um, finally, um, she's had a MacBook Air for about three months and was buying her first iMac last night. And before she pressed buy, she had to call me and confess because she was feeling so bad about it. <laughs> which, leaves, which leaves Dave as the only holdout who still shits on Apple after he made the migration. But um, anyway, we, we were calling it. My sister is very, very creative. She's, she's very artistic. Um, she has a, a wedding business and a greeting card company. And we were talking about the difference between commercial and um, and, and just totally following your muse yesterday. And I gave her the exact same comparison that Johnny just did between Axis of uh, Axis and um, Invasion. And I was saying how, you know, I love Invasion. I, I love what it does. It's totally commercial, but it was designed to be commercial. And Axis came from a pure, for lack of a better word, place. Um, and, you know, we, we spent a lot of time and, and thought on it. And, and, and Axis just doesn't sell like Invasion. Invasion sells every single day. Um, it is, you know, commercially what, doing what it's supposed to do. And she said, well, um, it, it's funny because she's tried. My sister has actually tried to sell out before. And she'll make greeting cards that she thinks, you know, these are going to take off. Like, this is a very commercial design. And they never do. They always flop. And whenever she does, um, you know, something that's just totally off the wall, and she's like, ah, no one's ever going to buy this, that ends up being a hit for her. And she sells a lot of that particular card. And um, and she says, well, that's probably for her because she's not – she's not really capable of doing the commercial stuff because there are commercial companies that do it so much better. But um, I think the, the the difference is that when you're talking about Amazon, it's algorithmic, right? So there are, it's not just people making individual choices one at a time. There are search engines that are kind of, you know, um, serving that to you. So it's, it's a little different. And, and in that environment, you do want to be a little more commercial if you want to sell. Hey, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna raise my hand to uh, RC Bray who's just joined. Um, you're you're gonna need to sit through our insufferable ad read because you're a few seconds early, a few minutes early. Um, Happy to. Okay. <laughs> can you hear me? All right. Yeah. We can we can hear you great. All right, then I'll shut up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hurry and do it before Andy hops on too, and then it's just gonna be a big clusterfuck. So, um, Dave. Yes, Johnny. What would I do if I needed a new cover for anything we've been talking about? Non well, apparently you haven't been paying attention to our show. Uh, you would go to 99designs.com slash SVP. Oh, where, my God. Yes, where there are tons, tons, metric tons of designers waiting to do the perfect cover for you. Uh, we've used them several times, and we've always been happy with the result. Our most recent... Um, cover with them was for 12 uh, one of those quote precious books that I've been writing forever uh, when when we when we were starting to do 12 I didn't know what to do with it I, I had this idea but it it sucked I just didn't have the skills to pull it off uh, like some of our other covers so you so gave I up I gave up I threw my hands in the air then I then I heard one of our shows and I, I heard us talking about how awesome 99 designs was how fortuitous so we went there we we had a contest and the first few entries weren't good and I was like oh crap this is gonna be the first time 99 designs disappoints me but no they didn't they came through they came through with one of the best covers uh, we've ever had so yes use 99 designs.com they will not disappoint they will get you a professional looking cover Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Nothing to lose. So uh, start your custom design today at 99designs.com slash SPP, and that link will get you the free power pack upgrade valued at 99 bucks. We'll make your listing stand out. You'll get more entries so that when Dave says, oh, no, they're going to fail me, that doesn't happen. <laughs> Is 99designs the best lover you've ever had? No, that's you, Sean. <laughs> there you awesome. go. All right. So with that out of the way, I will uh, welcome the first of our of our two guests. Um, I, I've been told uh, that that you go by Bob, and that RC is your performing name. Is that correct? Should I call you Bob? Yeah, Bob's great. All right, Bob Bray. You do not look like I imagined you looking when I was listening to your to your stuff. It's always fun. It's like a radio personality. Yeah, I'm much fatter. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, you don't. You're, there you go. Same thing oh, about Dave me. loves you. <laughs> Good today. Um, do, do you? Uh, do, do you? Okay. Well, so I should be a little more professional. So, um, 
R.C. Yes, Brown. Of that's an audiobook narrator who did work for us on the beam and Yesterday's Gone. Um, which character did you uh, narrate for Yesterday's Gone? Do you remember? Um, what's his name? <laughs> no, I don't remember. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the uh, only one. Was it Dominic? Is that right? No. Dominic? No, what the hell is it? No, Dominic. That's, Dominic's for the beam. The yeah. beam, right. That's what I meant. <laughs> I'm gonna let me tell you something real quick. I'm looking. I'm looking it up right now. Uh, I've been saying I've been saying you are Dominic. <laughs> I, I've been comparing the wrong voice in my head. <laughs> well, I can I can do a quick Baricio Wolf for you if you want. Oh, you yeah. would love that. Yeah. Let's yeah, I don't know. It's my impression. I did that on the last one too. I just did it because you know I want I like consistency and so I just. <laughs> Drop my voice down and do Mauricio Wolf. Just drop it real low like that. But uh, I don't know. Hold on. Fuck, we're gonna play? play our Ray Chase right now. He's out of here. Oh God, <laughs> please do it. He's such a. Oh Brent Foster. Yes, of course. Oh okay. Oh, oh that's, I'm Brent. That's Dave's favorite. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, let me... Go ahead. I just I just want to give you a quick thing about audiobook narrators. They they. <laughs> I read a book. And then it's gone. I mean, out of my head. I can't. My my wife listens to everything I do, and she'll say to me, "Hey, um, what's happening with the guy? You know, the doctor, and he's doing this, and this is happening." And then the wife comes in. What happens? I'm like, "What the hell book are you even reading? I don't know." And I did it last week. I have no idea. So I, I apologize. I, I I have a confession. I write a book, and then it's out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> I have to reread it to remember what the hell I was writing. Perfect. Yeah. I, I got. There's only a few that I really remember. Remember, um, and it's not not because I don't love them don't, all. I, I love them tell, all. Age. Don't tell but, Andy that you don't remember. Though. Oh, I, I have to. <laughs> I have to remember that one. It's just it keeps coming at me wherever I go. I love it. Um, but yeah, there's just a. I, I I did it. I recorded that two and a half times. Like the first time I did it with the first release, and then um, <laughs> when Random House came out with their edited version, I thought I would save some time and just go through and. <laughs> Start to do some, you know, punch edits. Bad move, because they sounded like two completely different books, like two different... You could tell it was a mess. And so Greg and James over at Podium said, Yeah, um, did you re-record it? Uh, you no. Know. <laughs> so, so then I redid it. So I have that in my head, like, you wouldn't believe. I've just done it so many times, so I've got it pretty well in my head. I'm getting on you... <laughs> Vertigo here because for some I had decided that you were Nikolai and now I hear it now it fits like now Dominic was was one of my favorites and oh, okay I figured that out Dominic's the the police captain he's a little grizzled but he's always just a little pissed off at all the <laughs> <laughs> well yeah I could see that when you looked at me that's that's exactly what I look like I get it ah <laughs> uh, you fit right in here there um, you go. so do you guys uh, just before Andy comes on I just some audiobook narrators do you, do you guys sure. Interact much? Do you? I mean, you sort of sound like you know Ray. Do you? Do you know the people that work on a book I, with you? you have a I got to meet. I got to meet a, a secret clubhouse. It's more than that. It's uh, it's more of a dungeon, really. It's, oh, uh, I, <laughs> I got to meet Ray actually uh, this past. I can't remember. It was February or March. Um, there was a thing called the Voice Arts Awards. Um, I believe yesterday's gone was nominated for something there, and uh, I can't remember what category because they're they're kind of new, so it was kind of hard to. Remember, I know it was sci-fi. Anyway, yeah. Um, so yeah, he flew out. He thought he didn't realize that the awards were in New York, so he flew out and was like, "Hey, everybody, I'm here." So yeah, it was really nice to actually meet him um, because you know I I talked you know through Facebook basically uh, for the most part, and that's uh, we we do get to narrators do get to talk to each other eventually at APAC, which is the big uh, convention. But other than that, no, we're just stuck in our holes and. Because Ray is, Ray is super fun. He's been on the show a few times. He does yeah, he's all right. Fantastic Morgan Freeman <laughs> impression. Uh, a Morgan Freeman impression? Oh, he his Morgan Freeman is amazing. Oh, I've never that. heard it. Oh, it's just very obscene too. Yeah, it's it says awesome. obscene things about the Queen of England in Morgan Freeman's voice. It's wrong. <laughs> I don't know that I like that. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Um, right. Now I'm wondering who did Nikolai, so now I'm gonna need to look that up because I like. I don't, well, that's the problem. Is that I don't I don't know who did them. 
Um, I know who's on it. I know who's on the the right. on the book, but I don't know who did what. I you know I didn't know Ray, you know, did who did Baricio until like I actually talked to him. I was like, oh, oh, okay, you're the one that. Okay, how you doing? Nice to meet you. And he didn't look at all like I thought. No. There he is. No. So. Hi, how you doing? Hello, Andy. Hi, Andy. Andy Weir. Hello. <laughs> how you doing? We're here to the podcast. We're uh, just uh, hanging out. Uh, Bob's been here for about 10 minutes and um, being really obscene. Crashing you, Andy. He was like, saying, this guy's <laughs> such a dick to work for. He's made me do his books three times. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, two and a half. Two and a half. And he says it even after two and a half times, he doesn't even remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's on, like, Jupiter or something. I don't remember where it takes place. It's nice to finally talk to you directly, Bob. Yeah, it's nice to finally talk to you, too, Andy. This is the first time I think we've ever seen each other actually move. See, yeah, we're so makers. That's yeah. what we are. We haven't even spoken on the phone before. I'm like, hey, no. well, I know which one of them's Bob. I know that That's voice. me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nice. We email, but, uh, yeah, never never talk. So this this is pretty cool, man. This is cool. I get a lot of love for the audiobook. I get people emailing me all the time. It's like, oh, the narrator awesome. is great. I'm like, well, you might want to tell him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure he doesn't – I'm sure he wouldn't mind getting that message. No, yeah. I love it. <laughs> I, listen to the tell him. I, I, I listened to the audiobook. I haven't actually read the book. I listened to the audiobook. Yeah. It was, it was I, cool. I haven't read it either. I, I've listened to the audiobook. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's made my career, man. Thank you. Thanks for coming on the show, everybody. Um, and and uh, a tip of the hat to uh, Podium Publishing for um, for connecting us all, making us all buddies. Um, I do want to play just a little bit of the the, the Martian. Um, sure. This oh, James said, just take the one off of Amazon. I'm like, it's five minutes long. Five minutes on a podcast is an eternity. Yep. Um, so I have about a minute that I'm going to play from the official uh, sample. So um, I'm just uh, like I said, I'll just begin this here. The most important piece of the advanced supplies, of course, was the MAV, the Mars Ascent Vehicle. That was how we would get back to Hermes after surface operations were complete. The MAV was soft-landed, as opposed to the balloon bounce fest the other supplies had. Of course, it was in constant communication with Houston, and if there had been any problems with it, we would have passed by Mars and gone home without ever landing. The MAV is pretty cool. Turns out, through a neat set of chemical reactions with the Martian atmosphere, for every kilogram of hydrogen you bring to Mars, you can make 13 kilograms of fuel. It's a slow process, though. It takes 24 months to fill the tank. That's why they sent it long before we got here. Okay, so I'll just stop there. But um, if you haven't read The Martian or listened to the audiobook, uh, it, it's, oh, yeah, it's awesome. And um, I think my first uh, my first question for you, Andy, and this is kind of not really a question, kind of more of a comment, is I was listening to this and I was thinking, um, like before I re knew anything about, before I read any of your stuff, I said he's he's got to be an engineer, right? Like, um, I mean, the book it reads like a really really super entertaining, like not like a technical manual, but like a like this is how you would survive on Mars. Did you worry about that being? Like the amount of research, did you worry about it overwhelming the story or anything like that? Did you have to yeah. go to Mars? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the biggest challenge, not going to Mars. Uh, the, <laughs> uh, the biggest challenge was was striking that balance of getting it um, uh, so that, like, there, there's a bunch of really deeply technical information I needed the reader to know, but at the same time, I didn't want to come off like a Wikipedia article, right? I didn't want it to be, like, dull, dry facts. So I had to balance it. I guess... Uh, the, the main thing I did was I just threw jokes in with a really smart ass, you know, <laughs> yeah, character. Right, the humor, the humor made everything else just. I mean, spoonful of sugar, right? It was, it was very palatable because yeah, funny. Thanks. Um, and what really sucked is like there are a lot of places where I did all the math and worked this cool stuff out and solved all the technical hurdles, and I'm like. This is going to end up being one sentence in the book, just this real quick. Oh, yeah, <laughs> by the way, no, no. And I'm like, no, it took me a long time to work this out. It should take them a long time to read it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you know, I had to suppress that urge. I had to say, like, okay, you know, the objective here is to entertain the reader, not to show off how much math I can do. So <laughs> it, it was hard. It was hard to yeah. go, like, ah. Oh. There, there's two things I, I, I loved immediately. Uh, one of them was... Um, 
where you were, you were you were saying something that you pretty much see in a lot of books, and you actually had the narrator go blah 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 or whatever. No one was thinking that. <laughs> blah blah blah. The other thing was the, the very first line, which is "I'm pretty much fucked," and I was like, "Okay, I love it." Yeah, <laughs> yeah let's get right into this. <laughs> did, did you? Did you? We've gotten a lot of shit for for cursing in yesterday's gone. Like we get the morality police saying, "Oh, this is this is horrible. There's no need for profanity in fiction." I'm like, "What? Did you get a lot of shit for that?" Personally, You're fucking kidding me. Um, uh, no, not much. I mean, I get the occasional uh, email from people who are like, "Oh, I like the book, but there's a lot more profanity than I'd like." Um, mostly, it's more functional. Uh, how do I put it? Mostly the, the people who are worried about the profanity are um, like, you know, there's like, I get email from junior high school teachers who say like, I'd love to use your book as a teaching aid. I'd, yeah. love, to, I'd love to, you know. Like they're not least... saying that on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. yeah I'm I'm learning, know, I know, but there's a certain, you know, people get mad if you, and so actually Random House is considering a young adult edition that just has the swear words oh, replaced with softer kind of words. Cool. Looks like yeah. Bob's gonna be reading again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the, the young adult edition. He's just so sick of it. He's like, Ugh. no, no. There was right. there was a great line that was uh, edited from the first. Uh, it was Venkat saying, like, I think in the second one he says, you know, don't be a jerk, Mitch. Or no, it's, uh, it's he says, uh, why you know why don't they like me? He's like, because you're a jerk, Mitch. In the first one he said, because you're a dick, Mitch. <laughs> I love dick so much better. Yeah, <laughs> wait, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> just edit that out. out. That didn't sound right. No, no, no. Uh, edit everything else out. I'm just going to need <laughs> that one clip. <laughs> dick. <laughs> oh, no, you just said it, Andy. So. Oh yeah, there we go. Ah, yeah. uh, thank you. Today, the name of Bob's new podcast. Both Bob Gray yeah. and Andy Weir explain why they love Nick. <laughs> All right, I'm I'm down. Let's do it. <laughs> I can see we're we're already at about the seventh grade humor level and on our way down. Well, so, well see, that's the thing because if this is if you're making a middle school level, it has to include Dick. Right, yeah, that, that's our show, guys. <laughs> uh, Sorry. Andy, uh, no, no, no. I mean, this is the tone of our show. Normally, okay, fair enough. Right? <laughs> Doing everything right, um, Andy. Is, was this a, a story that was in your head for a really, really long time, and you just had to get it out, or what? What was the genesis of this story? Um, well, let's see, I, I first started coming up with it probably around 2002 or so, and I first started writing it in 2009. There was a lot of dead air between those two. It's not like I was thinking about it the whole time, but I came up with the concept sometime around 2002. I was just thinking about how a manned mission to Mars might actually work, and, like, not, not for story purposes, but just for, like, okay, how could we do it? Because I'm the kind of dork that designs space missions in his spare time. And I was like, okay, well, how do you get him there? How do you get him back? How do you keep him safe on Mars? And how do you deal with problems that could come up? Any mission plan needs to account for things that can go wrong. And uh, pretty soon I started to realize the increasingly desperate things you'd have to do in these scenarios are pretty interesting. And I'm, so I made a hapless main character to suffer through all of them. Yeah, so just just for anybody who doesn't have any idea, uh, who hasn't re read the book, I mean, it's it, the main character, Mark Watney, gets stranded on Mars, right? So it's like... Cast away on Mars, basically, right? Yeah. So how does he survive? Which is just like, I was just fascinated reading through the initial things where he's like, okay, well, now i got to make oxygen, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> um, but but I, I think that, I mean, the, the, the audience of this podcast is, I don't want to blow anything for anybody here, but it's, they're self-published authors. Yeah. <laughs> they, they well, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Right, which is why you're here. So, <laughs> your story is is really um, like I think it's what a, a lot of anybody who's listening to this would would like. That's the gold standard right there. Like that's something you aspire to. There's a movie uh, of The Martian coming out. It's this year, right? In 2015. Yeah, November 25th. With Matt Damon, and that's just like that's the dream. And and could could you? Kind of tell us the story because the way I understand it, it was the audiobook that took off first. Is that well? Yeah. Be before before that, um, the um, the ebook was doing pretty well also. Um, so it started off with just uh, a, as a serial that I was posting to my website, and it um, I, I had accumulated a small core group of uh, hardcore nerd readers, about three thousand people, and so I was really writing it for them. That's why it's so deeply technical. And then um, 
uh, once I finished it, I thought I was done, and I'm like, okay, that's it, and now I'm on to other serials, and I started to get emails from people saying, oh, hey, uh, I love your book, but I hate reading it on your website. Can you make an e-reader version? <laughs> and uh, and so, because nice. my website is shit, right? Um, it really is, I mean. And so I'm like, sure, okay. So I figured out how to make an e-reader version, and I posted it to the site. And uh, people are like, oh, great, thanks. I appreciate there's an e-reader version, but I'm not very technically savvy, and I don't know how to download an e-reader like file and put it on my on my device. Can you put, post it to Amazon or somewhere where I can download, where I can just use the interface to get to it? So I figured out how to do that, and it's just uh, Kindle Direct Publishing, which probably most of your uh, listeners already know about. Um, it's for you know self-publishing your stuff, and it's it's pretty good. They just take a percentage, but you have to charge at least ninety nine cents. You're not allowed to just give things away. So I set the price to the minimum ninety nine cents, and said, "There you go. Now you can uh, read it for free on my website, or download it for free from my website, or you can pay Amazon a buck to download it for you." And more people downloaded it than got it for. Oh, sorry, more people bought it than got it for free. It really sold very well. It made its way up to the top sellers list, and then that started a real snowball. And that was around the time that Podium contacted me, Podium, the publishers of the audiobook. And they, the, so my first real like professional deal uh, related to The Martian was with Podium. And then uh, shortly after that, I got contacted by an agent, and then uh, Random House wanted to make a print edition. It's interesting because all these people came to me, which is not the usual way things work. Oh, also, 20th Century Fox came to me. Do you um, hate making money or what? No, I don't. <laughs> You're like, no, I want to give it away for free. It's about the art. <laughs> I, I, it was my hobby. I, I, I should point out, earlier in life, in the mid, uh, mid to late 90s, I, I took a sabbatical from work. I, I managed to save up enough money that I, could, um, that I could take a few years off and just live off of it. Um, and so I took three years off and tried to be, become a writer. I wrote a book, not The Martian, a previous effort, and like couldn't get it. It's a standard story. Couldn't get an agent, couldn't get a publisher to even take a look at it. Nobody wanted it. Nobody, it, just nobody was interested in that or anything else that I wrote. So after three years, I gave up and said, like, well, okay, so it looks like I'm not going to be a professional writer, but it can still be my hobby. So I was in the mode, mentally, of just thinking of writing as a hobby. So when I posted it to the website, I, I, it never even occurred to me to try to approach, you know, any sort of self-publishing or professional anything. I just kind of bungled into it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, everything worked out great. <laughs> so how, how did you, okay, you, you posted it to the website, and you had 3,000 uh, nerd fans that loved the hell out of it, and I, I'm pretty sure they're responsible for the success of the initial e-book. Uh, so how did, you get, how did you get those people reading you to find you in the first place? What were you doing on your blog? How did they know you? Is this from your prior career or what? Uh, yeah, well, from, not from my prior career, but from my uh, earlier writings. So I'd spent the last 10 years or so writing. Like I, I'd, I'd been posting stuff to my site since uh, maybe 99 or 2000. I started with a web comic and then a bunch of short stories and then I started uh, a number of serials. The Martian was just one of them. Um, and so I just slowly accumulated readers over like 10 years of writing. That, that sounds similar to what Sean and I were doing on Collective Inqua back in 2008. We started a serial on there, and we, we didn't have 3,000 people reading it, but we did have people say, when's it going to be a book? Because yeah. we, we don't like reading on the web. That sucks. Yeah, they don't. Oh, and another thing, um, uh, I skipped over a step. I wrote a short story um, in 2009 called The Egg, which Bob did the audio version of that as well. And um, the whole story is fi uh, like a thousand words long. It, well, how, long is the, how long is the audio, Bob? Like eight minutes? Something eight, like that? Seven, seven minutes, 42 seconds. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, you can't. <laughs> that's, 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 <laughs> that's, uh, that's the whole story is that long. It took me 40 yeah. minutes to write in a, in a single evening, and it became, like, at the time, the most popular thing I'd ever written. It got it got emailed around. It's all over the yeah. web. It's, well, it's got, all, like, little movies made about it by yeah, fans. You, yeah. yeah, YouTube movies and stuff like that. Wow, that's awesome. And yeah. so that that was one of the main things that got me regular readers was people coming to my site to read that. Yeah, we have a commenter here. Uh, Chrissy Moss says, this has been my favorite audio book this year, The Martian. Very well done. Also, The Egg was an amazing story, so uh, maybe she found you that way too. Uh, a lot of people did, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So what's... Um, <clears throat> I have a, this is sort of a two-tier two, two question. Two-tier question. Uh, is um, our 
are you, are you working on something else? And will you do you think do you think you'll self-publish it, or do you think you'll go with Random House or one of your traditional partners? Uh, I'm working on my next book now. It's uh, tentatively titled Zhek, Z H E K, and it is uh, more traditional sci-fi. It's got um, aliens and faster than light travel and telepaths and stuff. Um, it'll be out in early 2016. It is definitely going through Random House. It's like I already have a deal. I already have a, a contract with them. Nice. And um, and also uh, Podium will be doing the audiobook. Or at least they have the rights to the audiobook. I, I assume they will want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's well, like, I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, at, least it'll be, at least it'll be different text this time. <laughs> I've said he'll read it, but only once. One yeah. time. One time. But I will go sure through and hear and make sure that there is no, you know, any any difficult thing okay. like like ASC2. ASC2. Like, nice. here, can you show Andy this? Oh, yeah, this is I a, just saw that. Yeah, nice. The Matrix. <laughs> very I don't cool. know if you can pop me up on the screen. There you go. I see uh, it, yeah. That's just that's for you, awesome. brother. <laughs> Thanks, man. Wow. <laughs> you bet. My pleasure. <laughs> oh, I felt so bad for Bob when, when they were saying, like, when Podium first said, like, oh, we're going to do, you know, the audiobook version. And I'm like, great. And then I'm, like, thinking about the book, and I'm like, there's – this big, there's a chunk of the book where they're communicating basically with a speak and spell. They're yeah. communicating with by pointing an arrow at letters, and there's these long strings of abbreviated of, of letters that I just like vomited out into the text <laughs> without, without expecting the reader to actually like read them all. They right? said they said read it is written. Like, yeah, okay. and so poor Bob's got these strings of characters that are like you know fifty letters long that are just like Z Z J L P X Q nine. You know, and I'm like, oh, I, I was like, uh, you know, if I had it to do over again, I would say, guys, let's just rewrite that scene for the audio book. Let's make some changes or something. No, That's no, what Bob. Would... It was actually a, a four-hour book, but because of all those, yeah, about, uh, <laughs> the other the other <laughs> six hours or. Are... <laughs> now I I didn't That's hear right. the audio version. So how did you handle that? Did you actually read all those letters, and were you faithful, or did you just start making stuff up yourself? <laughs> no, I, you know what? It's funny you said it before. The first time that I read it, and I sent it to them for proofing and everything. I read it. I said, you know, A C X T L B blah blah blah. You know how it goes. And then I just read it. Because I was like, no one's going to want to hear me go through this. But they said, no, you got to stay true to the text. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, Let's make this interesting. <laughs> audio has changed the way we've written, too, because when we wrote Yesterday's Gone Season 1, we had no idea about audio at the time. And yeah. we, have a, we have a scene in there where we have a dog barking for a rather considerable amount of time. <laughs> and, and the dog is actually barking trying to... In a book? Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, well, the, dog, the dog isn't really a dog. It's a big convoluted thing. Okay. But anyway, the dog's barking, and it's just we have the dog bark for five minutes. <laughs> Excuse me. So I, I I don't even know how they handle that because I listen to that. I'm afraid to hear it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we have a con me. I, I have a real opportunity <laughs> here. I could put a bunch of meows and stuff and the text and dress and Bob and I could do that, right? Like, oh my uh, the the elephant orgasm. I'm talking audiobooks, I have to share this uh, this story a little bit. Because audio audio has changed the way we re rewrite too, but not exactly in the same way Dave was describing. Um, we have a series called Robot Proletariat, and the uh, narrator we got because it's it's like Downton Abbey with robots, right? And of course. The narrator we got is is his name is Simon Whistler, and he has this fantastic posh British accent. And so um, it's become a challenge now. Like, what can we write to make Simon embarrass himself? There's <laughs> <laughs> uh, this long scene with with. The sex bots that are owned by the family that we played on the show, where Simon has to read all these horrible things. <laughs> I think, uh, I think uh, in Jack, I'll just have like, you know, oh, uh, sir, we're getting an encrypted message. Here's the raw <laughs> output, and it'll be a sequence of a thousand random numbers, and then. <laughs> hey, man, I can do it. If anybody uh, can, I can. I can make a CX7 sound like just beautiful. No, I think I'm listening for that right now. There's some shenanigans too in season three. Uh, we have another comment. Patrick Stemp says the voice work on The Martian is great. My first audible purchase. So, thank you, Patrick. Oh, boom. 
<laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks. Good man. <laughs> you had any worries that this time might be wasted? No. <laughs> no. Talking, about, uh, talking about things that get lost in the um, audio audioization. I don't know. Um, okay. It, uh, uh, the there is a visual gag in the book that there was just. Oh, no, I know. It was too bad. <laughs> and so we just had to change it to kind of a a little joke, but it, it's too bad. There's nothing. You I can know. Do. It was literally ASCII art in the text, and so how do you do that? <laughs> it, was, it was what? <laughs> oh, ASCII. I'm sorry. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it was ASC2 art. Does anyone, anyone, do you guys know about that or no? The, yeah. When I read the when I read the book the first time, I said ASC2. I was in a hurry. I think I even know what I think you even know what that section is. <clears throat> Good lord! And then well, finally. That's why I was happy I got to redo it. That's like the one thing I said. If I have to fix anything in there, I don't even care if I change the voices. I just want to say ASCII. Did you, did you get a lot of geeks like emailing you say, excuse me, you're saying it completely wrong? Uh, yeah, I mean, the first couple of reviews on Audible said, I think he meant ASCII. And then I saw something, uh, Andy, that you did. Uh, it was on YouTube. It was an interview, and somebody asked you about it. And you are like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> What's um, my friends had said, so I'm a computer programmer and so my, my friends had said oh okay what you need oh, to do Andy is you need to develop a character encoding scheme and just call it ASC like Andy's standard characters right? Oh. and then make an extended version of it that's ASC2 you know, that's what I'm talking about retroactively <laughs> make it correct <laughs> just needs to be invented sometime between now and 2035 right that's fine yeah that's good yeah. So what, what I'll, kind of things? I'll help. <laughs> so, so Andy, what kind of things were you uh, programming? Were you doing games and stuff? And are you going to maybe cross pollinate some of the stuff with your writing, or what? Um, well, now I'm full time writing. Uh, I was a computer programmer for 25 years, so I did a lot of things. I did spend about 10 years in the games industry, though. I worked for Blizzard. I was one of the programmers on Warcraft 2. That's oh. how long ago that was. Um, and then I did a bunch of stuff for like mobile gaming and um, stuff like that. The last place I worked was uh, uh, I really liked it there. It was called it was Mobile Iron. They do uh, mobile device management, which I could describe, but it would put you to sleep. Um, but I really liked the people and I really liked the job. So when I quit, it wasn't a lot of people think it's like this ah take this job and shove it kind of thing. I'm going to go become a writer now. But it wasn't. It was kind of bittersweet. I was like oh well I'm going to miss these people and I'm, I really liked my job. As for cross pollinating. No, I'm not. I don't. Uh, I don't really do any uh, programming now, aside from writing software to kind of help do the math for my research. Um, uh, the main thing is that, like, if I if I start a software project, if I start you know dorking around writing a game or something like that, it it will completely consume me, and I'll spend all my time doing that because it's fun. Right. And uh, when you when you're self directed and and you don't have a boss breathing down your throat to do your job, it's a it's a it's a bad move to like pick up an obsessive hobby. <laughs> yeah, I get that. <laughs> is um the other stuff that you that you you're working on and that you've done is it all that um research based? Because I'm just wondering if the next person is going to be like, well, this one this one has teleportation and they didn't, you didn't explain how all the coils work and stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, um, so the next one, um, I I have basically I've come up with my own set of like physics. For, for the stuff that breaks normal physical laws, like, you know, in, in real life, you can't travel faster than light. So no matter what, I'm going to be violating something, right? Um, so I came up with my own set of uh, physics that I said, I made the rules internally consistent. And I, I went way down the rabbit hole on this. I mean, I've spent weeks and weeks of time just, like, working on the physics model for how my FTL stuff works. And, I mean, I've, I've accounted for everything all the way down to, like, the quantum level. I've double-checked how relativity is affected by it. And um, it's, it's internally consistent. Wow, but absolutely, it breaks the rules. You may actually solve the corn in <laughs> I um I, well I actually uh like I was thinking like I, I don't know it'll be kind of up to the publisher but I I want to have an appendix at the end of the book saying like okay here's a detailed dry description of all the physics related to the FTL travel that I invented you know warning to readers this is not narrative this is not fun this is just math well, well, I'm a full like as you on a website, right? like, <laughs> no I could put it on a website but I also want to put it in the book <laughs> yeah. yeah Sean <laughs> 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 thinking. 
You, you might actually solve some actual space travel problems. Have you have you thought of that? Like with, with no, the... no, I will not. It, it, it is not possible. Like, I, I I made up fake physics that they then take advantage of. Ah, okay. I just want the fake physics to be um, two things: one, internally consistent. So that, like, if you say, okay, these are the rules, are you breaking the rules you just made up or not? And then, um, number two, I, want, I wanted it to be something that we cannot yet disprove with real physics experiments. <laughs> oh, that's <Okay>. awesome. So, <laughs> and so, will you redact something if it is later disproven? Nope, nope, can't do that. <laughs> because, uh, well, shoot, there's been a bunch of stuff about Mars that have come up since, uh, since the book came out. Those bastards at JPL and NASA have learned a lot of things. <laughs> so, like, number one... Um, uh, on, on, on Mars, number one, uh, so Mars has an enormous amount of water in the soil. It has like, for every cubic meter of soil on Mars, there's about 35 liters of water, like, in it. So there's this whole, you know, there's this whole big chunk in the book where he's desperately making water out of this really clever thing. Yeah, he could have just, like, baked it out of the ground. Like, he could have just <laughs> shoveled dirt in and, like, collected the water from it. It's like that stupid. Um, what was another thing? They almost landed Curiosity in Marth Vallis. Instead, they chose a different landing site. But Marth Vallis was one of the final four um, places when they were narrowing down sites. And Marth Vallis, like, the main character drives his rover through Marth Vallis. So I would have to explain why he ignored, like... The rover. A rover. <laughs> 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 well, I'm not stopping at that. I'm not stopping at that. Uh, that's no, like Mars is equivalent of the world's largest ball of twine. I'm just going to drive right by it. And then, <laughs> and then the uh, the other thing. Oh yeah, so high rise. There's a satellite that has a uh, high rise, and it um, they're taking very high resolution pictures of the surface of Mars. Like each pixel represents 25 centimeters on the surface. Like it's that. Oh, wow. That's the incredible resolution that they have. And so they they checked the landing site of Ares 3. So Ares 3 is the mission, the fictional mission in the book. They checked <laughs> the landing site and, and said, this is what the terrain actually looks like, and that's not as it's described in the book. And I'm like, <laughs> damn you for not going to Mars. You got this. nothing better than that. <laughs> I mean, I don't I, think they... I'm going to read it. Just don't bother because it's really... Yeah, it's they're like, hi, it. Andy, we got you. <laughs> <laughs> it's fiction. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's not well, until 2035. The landscape could change dramatically somehow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I like your the next one on Jupiter. Yeah. Show that. There you go. I like so, your response though. You said it's cool though that people would, you know, think so highly of my book that they'd actually go into it and try to figure all this out. <laughs> so that's a good reaction. There you go. Yeah, it is cool. <laughs> so, it, Andy, is is your next book uh, going to be a standalone book or is it going to be a series? Uh, it's supposed to be book one of a series. It can stand alone if it if it needs to. Um, it has a you know beginning, middle, climax, and end. And it, but um, I'm hoping that people like it enough that I can make it a series. Well, you made I'm, your own physics. It should be a series. <laughs> <laughs> you waste all that time for one book. I don't know. It could be a complete flop. Uh, the the only thing I, uh, it, it bugs me. I can't really make a sequel to The Martian because I can't. I mean. There's really no way to make a sequel to that that doesn't strain credibility, you know. <laughs> like, oh, what are the odds? Can you believe he got in trouble again? Oh, <laughs> Another planet. Just guy. Just That's the guy. Guy. Electric Boogaloo. Oh, can. man. <laughs> the Martian 2. <laughs> it's like Titanic yeah. 2. <laughs> no, for, for, for our regular listeners, uh, you guys wouldn't know this, but, but Sean and I are the ones who don't like to do research, and we just put unicorns in shit, right? Okay. Nice. The one who, I wouldn't say he likes to do research. It's more like he has an OCD compulsion where he has to do research and then knock on the table three times or things come to kill him. Yeah. And no, so, like, um, the, 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 the bit at the end of the Kindle book of the Martian that you like designed your own software to map the trajectories of like what the, the, the orbital paths would need to be. Yeah. Um, that's just wow. kind of off the hook, but that's, I mean, that's fun, right? Like, you wouldn't do that just because you needed to be accurate, right? Well, I wanted to be accurate, but yeah, I like doing that stuff. I love doing the research, and world building is fun. I mean, I think a lot of writers run into this, where you can, you can just, you know, run around in circles world building for as long as you want. You can just, you know, make up more and more finer 
deeper defined details of your setting, you know, forever. But eventually you have to have a story take place in it or nobody wants to hear about it. <laughs> and so I really love doing the research and making up the physics and everything. You know, Johnny's done this a little bit. Um, Johnny, do you remember when you uh, you did the, the math on the lattice for Plugged? And you sent an email. They're like, I just figured this out, and you were very. Yeah, proud. I basically asked if you put in a sheet of aluminum foil over the North American continent, what would that weigh? So, oh, that weigh? well, that'd be the surface area of a surface area of North America times the thickness of aluminum times the density of aluminum foil times the density of aluminum. Right, I had to look like we know how thick aluminum foil was and all this mm. stuff. Um, but, but, but yeah, I mean that is it, it is it was fun. Here's I don't know yeah so here are some calculations I did for Jack where I was worried about um, let's see they need to to do light speed or faster than light travel they have to end up setting their velocity to a very high gamma which is like the the time dilation stuff that you get and I was worried that it might actually violate the uncertainty principle because they would need to know their momentum more accurately than they possibly could and so I was like double checking the math on that. <laughs> That's the sort of thing that I do. By the way, that math looks like Martian to me because yeah. I suck. <laughs> hey, hold, hold that back up. I'll read it for you. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Back down, back down. Oh, my screen's out. Oh, damn it. <laughs> my screen's out. Math. <laughs> then are you? Oh, yeah, I'm going to make sure. I should. I should insist in the audiobook contract that uh, Bob also read that appendix. <laughs> I will. Use lots of terms. Close your eyes and listen. And now, Appendix B, a long <laughs> series of Ugandan diacritical letters. For the hell of it. <laughs> I'm skipping away, right to the appendix on that. <laughs> if we take a transcription of this episode, you want to read it back, Bob? <laughs> Sure, like, let's see what happens. And then Bob said, sure, let's yeah. see what happens. That happens. And, and Andy I said, like I dick. love Dick. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I love Dick, Andy. God, what a wonderful, wonderful subtitle for this podcast. <laughs> Summary. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, but now David just said, I love Dick, too. Yeah, awesome. well, it's not the first you time got, I've said that. You got samples. It's not the first time oh I've said God. it. Oh, my God. Shit, I mean, any given Friday night, he's all... Oh, God, I hope my daughters don't walk in. If only. <laughs> Dave, uh, Dave act actively hides a lot of our podcasts from his very inquisitive child. So yes. my yeah, my, my door is wide open. <laughs> and they're just waiting to see Daddy. <laughs> so you Learn a few like new things. So are you just, like, at your computer, Bob? Or are you? Uh, yeah, I'm at my computer... computer. My booth is right there. Oh, it's right okay. behind me. That's right. And so, actual... yeah, I'm just sitting here where this is where I, you know, <laughs> go when I'm not in there. This is my excuse <laughs> for not recording. <laughs> so, and, uh, so, and yeah. record and I, I like Dick because. Yeah, hold on one second. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna need, we're gonna need a really high quality. I like Dick. <laughs> um, this is the sort of thing that um, that we get Dave for here. This is a clip of Dave. Who hasn't been alone in a porn theater touching themselves? So there you go. <laughs> I was defending Pee Wee Herman, all right? Me? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Porn theater. <laughs> all right, I have the internet. <laughs> I know. Why would you go to a theater, stupid? Well, that was <laughs> back in the day before the internet. Pee Wee couldn't do it on the internet back then. <laughs> you yeah. could do it back in, like, 94, man. What are you talking Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I know. Not that I know. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I'm masturbating to ASCII, yes. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Seriously, don't you have, like, authors watching? <laughs> uh, I yeah. don't think this is what they signed up for here, people. No, it, ac <laughs> it actually <laughs> sadly is. <laughs> oh, is it? Okay. Awesome. <laughs> we, right, broke no to we broke no new taboos this episode. Okay, good. <laughs> Not after Morgan Freeman and the Queen with uh, with Rachel. Okay. All right. Yeah, I give that a send for everyone. <laughs> I want to hear that. I want to hear right. it. So why why don't we wrap it up? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna first of all, um, what's the best? What do you what do you guys want people to know about? Um, Andy, what your your new thing is under? Uh, it's, it's in uh, I'm working so. on it now. Um, 
Uh, yeah, and it should be out in early 2016, or that's the hope. Also, I want to make sure everybody knows that Bob likes dick. <laughs> <laughs> so keep that in mind, everybody. So pass that along. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank web, you for, website thank you. Uh, for you guys. What, what about you, Bob? You want to try and regain your dignity after that? Or just like... <laughs> That's not possible. I may as well accept it and move on. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, rcbray.com. Um, all the stuff on there will get you to me, Twitter, and Facebook and all that stuff. Uh, I wanted to tell Andy, though, we've been talking about it, but I, I just wanted you to know I've, uh, I went ahead already and I recorded two of your shorts. Oh, um, excellent! So yeah, we were talking awesome. about. Um, yeah, um, we've been talking about uh, doing a, a short story collection of like. So I have some short stories. Unfortunately, not enough to really release a book of them. I just don't have enough of them. But we were talking about um, doing an audio collection of those short stories. But even then, it would be like not many minutes. So we're we're still working on. But Bob's Bob's just kind of like making a library of them so he can just yeah. be like, done. <laughs> well, well, I'll, well, yeah, exactly. So but I'll send them to you, just so you know. But I like saying that oh, so cool. that, you know, like any fans of The Martian going, oh, oh, there's other ones. How do I get them? You can't, because only you I have them. You can't. Only Bob has them. <laughs> <laughs> so which, which two, Bob? Not even Andy has them. Oh. Jeez, I don't remember the names of them. Um, okay. It's the one uh, uh, I'm trying to say things without ruining it. <laughs> Let's all be uh, the, quiet the while one, Bob comes up with something. The chef? The, no, maybe? it's the one with... The, no, I didn't do the chef. It's one of the shorter ones. It's it's the... Uh, God, it's like I can't... I can almost not say them because... It, because it'll, you'll it'll just... What you remember thing. is the twist. <laughs> yeah. It's Yeah, no, it's the guy... It's the two guys talking about the, you know, the girl that uh, he met. And she's the one. And Oh, yeah. Um, the real deal. The real deal. Yeah. And also the girl who's... Uh, who comes in and she's talking to the guy? She's oh, yeah. like hanging Access. out there. Access. Yeah. And there's the other one too. Um, damn it. Ah, whatever. Oh, <laughs> <it's> telling, <laughs> but, but that guy's just chatting in those vague things. But the guy's talking to a girl. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm try- I don't remember the titles, and I'm trying to tell them what they are, but I, yeah, I don't want to remember most of my most of my stories revolve around a twist. They're usually very short. Uh, and they just have a twist, and so what you'd remember about them is the twist. Yeah, it is. It's, it's like the usual suspects. You know, once you know it, you're like, oh man, oh damn, he got me. Yeah. You know, so it's right, well, true. Why, but why don't you guys just 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 hang in for a bit while I end the show, and then that'll give you a chance to just you guys can talk a little off the air rather than having everybody listen in. So sure. let me. I'll, Play the outro music here, everybody. Thanks for. Oh, that's better. That was a great show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, right. Let's try that again. Thanks for being on, guys. Uh, this has been the Self Publishing Podcast. Um, Andy wants everyone to know that Bob says he likes dick. Um, and uh, RC Bray at rcbray.com. And uh, you don't care about us. You've heard us about blah, a lot of times. So um, and stay tuned for Andy's next story about the guy with the, the girl. And then, <laughs> so, uh, thanks everybody. This is the Self Publishing Podcast, and we'll see you all next week. And we're out. <laughs>